Welcome to this second of two videos for the Chapter 3 HTML class where we are looking at the way we can convert this Java Jam Coffee House website from Chapter 2, which has had the basic navigation menu, bulleted list, name and address, and all that, going from here to using something called cascaded style sheets where we can change the format with just a few steps so it has a neater and more easily changed or modified look to it. And I'm assuming you've already watched the first video. If you haven't, you need to go back and watch that. I also suggest on Blackboard that you look at the help menu because if you're looking, if a student is looking just for a solution to the problem and that's it, they're not going to learn. I know there's a time factor with busy lives and such, but if you're going to be really strong at designing web pages, you need to know more than just a software package. You need to know what's going on behind the scenes, especially if you go beyond just one or two web courses. If you go into Blackboard, and again, this wonderful Windows 8 does this in the least little movement that I have, like it's doing twice, and I told you my videos are on the fly, so thank you for bearing with me on this. In Blackboard, under the Help menu, I've got a section that says, please watch these videos. I'll take the Chapter 5 off, but if you look at these two videos, it says CSS Basics and CSS Additional Features. It will give you some details as to how these concepts operate. It's very important, especially as you go into further chapters, that you have a pretty good understanding or gain an understanding in time of how the CSS concept works. I'm just going to right now, go right now by what the book is saying for you to do, just to give you some directions. So if we're looking at the page on the Java Jam case study, which is page 117 I have on the screen right now, task one is to create a folder, and I'll get to that and revisit that in a very few minutes. We're going to look at the external style sheet, task number two right now, and if you follow the directions very, very carefully, I know a lot of people these days are not readers, but it does help. We want to design this external style sheet, and we want to have, at this point, four pieces of information. There will actually be five. One of them is, is directed later on in the assignment. And I'll just go ahead and read this with you. Number one says, global styles for the document. Use the body element selector with background colors, pound symbol, or hashtag these days, FFFFCC, text color, 330000. These are just codes for the colors that you saw early, earlier. And then the option of the Verdana, Arial, or any sans serif font. The way this is done is you start a brand new document. And again, I suggest very, 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 very strongly that you do not use Word. You want to use something that's much simpler. Use WordPad or Notepad or something like that to do this. I'm using Word in this. I'm not being hypocritical. I'm using Word in this particular video because I have an easier time doing the zoom in for those of you who need it. So you want to have a document and you want to start with the word body. Again, my directions right here. Stop the video. If you need to pause, you probably would, would benefit from reading. In fact, I know you'd benefit by reading the information in the book also, but if you actually go in the textbook, and with this video I'm having to bounce around quite a bit, you want to use the body selector element, and the way you write this code is to write the word, the particular tag, and, and if you look at your HTML code, you will see the word um, body at the very beginning. There it is and you want to have a definition for the body of the document. To do that, we'll go in here and actually make the solution right here for it. Let's see. To do that, I'll type the word body and after that, you can put it beside of it, below it. it these, the layout really doesn't matter as long as you have the syntax here. You want to surround your code with these little braces. Now do not get the braces mixed up. They are not parentheses. They are not brackets. Some people misunderstand the words. You gotta be very specific about the particular characters. It's the curly braces that you want to use. No parentheses, no brackets. It's very, very specific. Inside there, as as the definition said, you want to put in some information. Again, however you laid this out is totally up to you. It says to use background color FFFFCC and you just write the word background color. You have to spell these words correctly and use the right syntax. You'll then put a colon and then 
the little pound symbol like you do when you're doing hashtags in Twitter, FFFFCC. Every one of these definitions within the body tag and other tags have to end in a semicolon. So the syntax is very, very strict. You need to be accurate with that. It says to make the color, and I'll type the word color, that's text color actually, pound symbol 33 three, followed by four zeros. And in essence, I'm doing this with you or for you, but hopefully this will help you understand the directions in the book. The font family you want to use will be, it says Verdana. You separate these by commas. Arial. And if there's not a Verdana or an Arial font on a computer, and unless it's a really old one, you'll have it, you want it to be sans serif, which basically means you don't have the little feet at the end of the letters. This is an example of a, of a font that you're seeing on the screen right now. That's sans serif. All right, that is for the body tag. So what that means will happen is for the body of the document, the background color will be kind of a yellowish color. The foreground color of the text will be the 330000, and the font family will be Verdana if that font is there. All right? If we go now to step two, I think you get the idea of how this works. You simply follow the directions that go with the exercise. And I'll pull this up here. Sorry for bouncing around on the computer, but it's the only way I can do this on a video. Number two, styles for the H1 element that configure background color, and you got that, text color, line height, and center text. And if you look through your book, you'll have this information. We're looking in step two right here on this page. And again, stop the video as you need to if you need to process it. I don't have time to big, big long pause or we'd have two hour videos, and that would not make you very happy individually. So let me see what's happening here. By the way, if you peeped at something where the code there is there and you paused it, I'm giving you the code basically anyway at some point. Let me see where it is. And again, I'm sorry for the scrolling around and maybe making you dizzy, but I'm having to find, I'm, I'm having to do this very late. It's been a very stressful semester, and I've had some major issues with books at this writing, Some a, a lot of difficulties this semester, and I'm very apologetic for what's been happening this semester. It's been very unusual. All right, for H1, you're going to have, again, those braces are there. And just to make something a little different, just to change it, just to show you that it's OK, it said to use background color. Again, the colon. I'll let you put in this information yourself. End it with a semicolon. It tells you exactly what to do. It says to make the regular text color, and you put in that information yourself also. If you draw blanks exactly like Mike's doing, then you're following my video way too literally. It says to use the line height as 200%. I will give you that one and just actually write 200%. You're basically making the line height double. I won't go into explanations of all this because you can read about this in your textbook. And you want the text alignment. Sorry about that. You want the text alignment to be center. Again, a reminder to those of you who may be critical, I don't make videos for professional. I make, my, make them for my students, and this is what you get. All right, now these, the body tag and the H1 tag are standard definitions, if you, if you please, that are built into the HTML language. We can also invent our own definitions. We don't have to go by just body or just H1. And again, for those of you who are extremely visual learners, I'll show you what I'm talking about again. When you're looking at the standard tags, H1 is a tag that's in the language. Div is a tag in the language. The anchor hyperlink reference is standard. These are built into the language. The unordered list and the list items are in the language. But we can also make definitions of our own that are not necessarily in there. You could have a definition if you wanted to called Mike. It would be silly, but I could do that. But there are some definitions that are, I guess for lack of a better word, they're, they're kind of standardized in the language, but they're not formally listed in the language. And that's mentioned in the next set of directions when you look at this part. I apologize again for the very unconventional kind of flippant video here, but I'm under real time constraints right now and some difficulties this semester, and you just have to take what you can get. Number three says, I want a style for the navigation area so that when I, I want the style so that 
inst instead of looking like the home menu music jobs that you see right there I want the style to be very unique where it's centered and has some other in fact I think centering is the only thing with it and since this is often this is typically called a navigation menu a lot of times you'll see a style for this they'll call it NAV for navigation now they said to use an ID right here this is where if you go back to Blackboard as I said before and watch those CSS basics you'll understand this terminology which you will be held responsible for in the very near future but it says in step three make a style for the navigation area use an ID named nav now something you have to understand about these terms here we've got something here and I'm going to erase this if you're typing so don't just copy it yet we have some items here called ID and class in cascade style sheet if we use something called a class we would proceed or precede the name of the class by period so if it said to use a class called nav I would have period and the word nav and that period makes a big difference if it says an ID called nav I use a pound symbol in front of it those definitions simply mean that I've invented or the the composer of the web page has invented his or her own definition right here not a standard tag like h1 or body or bold or something like that the ID is only allowed to be used once in a web page. A class can be used as many times as necessary, but this one said to use an ID named nav. So to make an ID named nav, I not only put the word nav in there, NAV, but to make an ID, I put a pound symbol in front of it. That tells the computer that this is a an item in the Cascade Style Sheet definition list that is basically used only once. Now I use pound nav right there and then the definition that it says to use again same same rule applies you want to have the little curly braces surrounding it again you can go across or you can go vertically it doesn't matter to the HTML document and it says to use center text it says use the text align property and so I use text align colon the word center and you still have to end it with a semicolon even though we've got the little curly brace there so that is the definition for now so what's going to happen here is the navigation toolbar is going to automatically be centered again to give you a visual right here because this can be very confusing very quickly instead of the navigation bar being lined up to the left as it was in chapter 2 it's now going to be centered as you see here with the eventual chapter 3 solution the fourth piece of information that's asked for right here is a style for the page footer area. Use an ID named footer. Now again, remember an ID has a pound symbol in front of it, and the name of it's going to be footer. Again, that's that's not a normal HTML word, but it's kind of a standard over the process of, of the last 10 or 15 years of trying to standardize web pages and web page rules. So we'll have an ID named footer. So again, within this document, we're going to have something else called pound symbol and the word footer and again when I make this definition I'm going to have the little curly braces and that one that you see at the bottom of the screen right there can just be eliminated alright what does it say it says to configure the background color the text color the small font size the italics and center text so that is done by having in this case five pieces of information and because I got five pieces of information this is just Mike Sis doing this you don't have to it's totally up to you but neatness does make a difference so we'll have background color we did this before and there'll be an item in there you can fill that in yourself text color we've done before and we use the word color rather than text color right here and you'll fill in that definition the next one is going to be the font size I'm not going to explain these definitions right now that for example this point 60 M you can read that in your book I'll do this maybe if there's another opportunity but in the interest of time and the length of the video it'll be easier if I don't explain it. I'm sorry if I'm just in the headset like I said the constraints right now are unbelievable so just take what you can get the font style is going to be italic so we have something called font style this is all in chapter 3 and we have the 
center text, which we did earlier in the nav definition. So we have text align. And this syntax is very critical. If you don't get this syntax right, HTML will try to produce the page anyway, but it may not do what it's supposed to do. And of course, you'll have your closing brace. Now, this particular document, with the exception of one item, is now complete. This is a document that they mentioned in your book that will be called javajam.css. So when it says here you will use a text editor task 2 to create an external sheet named javajam.css, what you want to do is to take this document and you want to go file, save as, and you want to call it wherever you store it. Now you've got to remember, you have to remember where you store this. I can't do this for you. You want to call it Java Jam period CSS. Don't give any other definition for it. I had a student argue with me vehemently a few years ago that she did it correctly and she misspelled CSS. It caused her page not to work. But instead of trying to reason with her, she wanted to argue. So please be careful with your typing. Read and spell and type correctly. This Java Jam document is going to be the one that causes the web pages to color the way they're supposed to. So I won't save mine for right now, but that will be your document. It will consist of this body tag. That's all it will have. The body tag from, from step one, the H1 tag from step one, the nav from step one, the footer from step one, and you'll have one more that will come up later called a wrapper, which isn't listed right here. I think it should have been. And just check your syntax and make sure you've got your semicolons and braces and all that stuff's correct. Now, how do we make, with this CSS file, how in the world do we make this page look like this? How did they tie together? Well, that's what the directions are explaining in the next section. When you go over here to task number three, let me get up here where I can get to it. Thank you for your patience. We now go to the index page. You want to bring up the index page, the home page that you had from chapter two, and you'll make three very small changes to it. In step one, what you have to do to connect the CSS page to the home page, what you have to do is do something in step one that says to add a link element to the page. And you can look for the link element. It's, it's in various places in your book. The link element, and I'll see if I can find this for you. This may make the video a little bit long, but if you're going to depend very exclusively on my videos, then you're going to have to deal with a sometimes lengthy video to get it done. I'm going to see if I can find this in your book. I happen to know it, but I want to give you a visual reference as necessary to get this get this stuff connected. It's a link statement. And again, thank you for your patience as I do this stuff on the fly. And I'm looking for it. You don't, you're not seeing this right now, but I'm looking for this in your textbook to see where I can find these places connecting. Again, I, I, I feel repeatedly very apologetic in what I'm having to do right now to get you through this, but I, at, this, at this point I don't have a lot of choice. And if I don't find it in the next couple of seconds, I'll let you do that. And thank you for your, for your help online. It's just... Again, I apologize for the the stress level that and some of you are going through some stress items, and I'm going through some stuff myself also, and it's making it a bit difficult. I found it on page 99, so I'll go to that just to give you a visual reference to it. So I'll go right here. I've got an electronic version of this book, so you can see it on the screen as well. If I go to page 99. Where we create the external style sheet that we just did. What we do, we, we did the style sheet earlier. We had a lot more than just body. But what you do in both the index page, the home page, and in the menu page is you're going to have a statement, you'll see it in blue right here, that has a link in there. And that's what you're going to be using to tie these together. It used to be you had to have three pieces of information. Now you don't have to have that. Instead of the word color.css there, you're going to have something else. Just take a look at that, pause the video, and I'll actually type this in for you. So what you'll end up doing is you'll end up opening up 
your index sheet, your index page, index.html, and before the head statement, it's got to be before the body of the document, you're going to have a special opening tag right there. Now, see if I can separate this to make it easier for you to see on the screen. You'll type the word link, and the hyperlink reference is going to be the name of your web, the name of your CSS page. Remember, we called it javajam.css. Put it inside a quote quotation marks, and then the relative part right here. This is always going to be the same thing, and this may wrap around. Possibly, it did. I'm trying to keep this on one line just for readability where this video is concerned. And you'll call it style sheet. And basically, this will be pretty much the convention. Sorry about that. This will pretty much be the convention that you use. So this will be the statement that you'll type in both in the index sheet and later on. You'll also do this with the menu sheet as well. You got to have it in both places. I'll just just for my video, I'll do a copy and paste. But you'll have to do this both in the opening page, the index page, and also in the menu page. You'll have that same exact statement because you're tying in that CSS sheet to each of these pages. That's the main thing you have to do first. Okay, so that's step one. All right, the next step, and again, thank you over and over and over for your patience. I'll go back. I think this was page 117, 118, something like that. And let me get back to that area. Here we go. Step two, config the navigation area. All right, if I config the navigation area, remember we did something called ID equals, we, we did a pound symbol with an ID called nav. What you will do right there is you will assign, step two, assign the div that contains the navigation to the ID named nav. In other words, translation, and you have to study this folks, this will not just come by watching my video, you've got to go through this. Let's look at the area where the navigation bar is. The navigation bar is right here, and the whole reason we did that div back in the previous chapter is so that we can do, so that we can apply some features to this one section. That's why we have the divs around it. So what you will do right here is you'll put inside this div statement the name of the ID. Remember earlier when we had the, and I'll try to put these side by side if I possibly can do so. Let me see if I can do that. I'll try this at least for right now. Do you notice that nav right there that says text align center? What we'll do is we'll associate that particular CSS feature to our page. So where I've got pound nav right there because that's called an ID, the way the syntax works in the HTML language, I will type in inside the div tag ID equals and the word nav in quotes. What that tells the computer to do is when we lay out these four links, home menu, music, and jobs, what it will do is it will take that centering and it will center it. That's how when you are looking at the web page that originally looked like that, it becomes the navigation stuff becomes centered because of that ID. And we could have put colors with it. We could have put a lot of features in there if we wanted to. All right, that takes care of the first part. Now, if you look at step three, we have, if you remember, we did an ID called footer, and that ID called footer has, let me scoot down here, has the italics and the size and all that stuff in there. And because we got the italics and the centering there, we no longer need the word small or the word I for italics because the font style and font size takes care of those. So basically what we'll do here is we'll take some stuff out, put some stuff in. So I'll go back to that particular page, the index page again. So what's going to happen now, because we have an ID called footer, we'll now go in, we'll go down to this ID, we'll go down to this section that has the mailing address and stuff. And now, again, that's made as a div on purpose. We'll apply those features to it by putting ID equals, just like we did earlier, except instead of nav, we got the word footer in quotes. So that will apply those features right here to that particular section or that particular division or div of our web page. Now, because I've got the italics and stuff built in, I no longer need the word small or the word italics. 
So I'll take that one out as well as the end tag. So I don't need those anymore because the CSS definition takes care of it. I hope that's helpful. All right. Now, if we look, go back and look at the, okay, we've taken care of that stuff. You'll save that page index.file. You'll go to File, Save As, and save it. You'll do the very same thing to the menu page in task number four. So let's go back to that one. Here's task four. We're looking at the menu page now. The menu page, again, if you're very visual with this, the menu page is the one, there's the home page we did earlier. The menu page is the one that has the kinds of coffee, the definition list, if you remember. The only thing we have to worry about in, in that example, and let's go down to the menu page, and the way I know which one's the menu page, if you remember, it's got these data definitions in there for just Java and the different kinds of coffees. What we have to do right here, we got the link in there already. The link is the part that gives us the connection to the CSS style sheet. Remember with the navigation part, we got the same situation we got to do right there. ID equals nav. Now some of you are just going to copy. I know that happens. I've talked too long. Hopefully though, you are trying to understand this and not just copying kind of monkey see monkey do. You're just not copying what I'm doing, but you're understanding it. Because you have to do your own on a test later on. Now, again, we go down to that footer. Same footer that we had in the other page. Remember that in this division, we're going to have ID equals footer and because that footer has the definition again I'll illustrate it because that footer has the definition of the size and the italics again I no longer need these pieces right here so we'll take those out and now if this page is complete you will save the menu page as a separate item as well let's go back to the book definition again and now we have task five. You may remember earlier that I said something to you about our having five pieces of information in our CSS page. We have the definition for the body for both pages globally, definition for heading one, definition for the navigation, definition for the footer. And what's going to happen now, they should have put this in my opinion in the same place in the book, We'll now have a special definition called a wrapper. That's going to happen in task, in task number five. It says to modify the Java Jam CSS, the index, and the menu to configure page content that is centered with 80% width. Now, gosh, what in the world does that mean? It basically means that when, if, if you'll notice on, on this particular page, the banner the, or the the bar the brown bar does not go all the way across it, it cuts off on either side that bar is just 80 percent of the width of the page I'll see if I can possibly illustrate this right here for you show you what I mean no matter how small or how wide I adjust that page do you notice that the brown bar does not go across 100 percent of the page but only 80 percent that's a feature that we'll be doing now it's got to do it to the entire page and for it to do that to the entire page, I have to use a special definition. So they suggested right here to add a style rule for an ID named wrapper, step one, with width set to 80%, margin right set to auto, and margin left set to auto, standing for automatic. That means no matter how wide or how narrow we adjust the size of the page on our screen, it will always be 80%. Now it said ID named wrapper. So this is the fifth part. If I go in and open this up, I'm just going to add another final definition to the CSS page called wrapper. So we'll do pound symbol, it's an ID, so wrapper. And again, we open it up with a little brace. It doesn't matter about what, what it looks like as far as the syntax, it'll take it any way you want to. And you can do this in any order you want to as long as the pieces are there. The width, colon, is 80%. The semicolon after it. Margin left. You just have to learn these words and look them up in your chapter. Margin left is automatic. We call it auto for short. Margin right auto. And then close it with the little brace. You want to save javajam.css again so that you'll have it correct. So you'll update it. 
I don't know why they didn't give this instruction earlier in the chapter, but they didn't for some reason. I'm not going to do mine, but you'll need to save yours. Now, that wrapper class will not be active in your web pages until you go in and update those as well. So now that, that wrapper class has been defined, step two, you'll have to add the code. And here's step two. Step two and step three right here actually are the same thing. It says to add the HTML code to configure a div element assigned to the ID wrapper that wraps or contains the code within the body section. And then you'll save those. I'll translate that for you. I kid about this. I'll translate this for you in English. Here's your index page right here, the updated index page. What you're going to do here is to take your body code, that the, bo the part that's inside the body tag is what happens to the entire page. Here is the opening definition of the body of your document and you've got your title, your navigation bar, your list, this is the index page and that's the end of your page right there and there's, there's the last body tag. Inside the body tag you want to have a new definition a new div which you haven't done before so we'll have div and the ID is going to be equal the word wrapper the one we just did earlier in quotes what this says is the entire page everything after body which is basically the entire page will be wrapped in a class that surrounds all the code and makes it all 80 percent width now because there's a div right there I have to have an end tag that matches it. So I'll go down here in front of the ending body tag right here. I don't have to put wrapper again. I just have to put the closing div. So I've got the div right there. That's the ending one. And it's matched up by the div that is right there. You'll do the, And you'll save the index page. You'll do the very same thing with the menu page right after the word body. You want to have that same wrapper, ID equals quotes wrapper, and at the very end, right before the end body tag, go all the way down through your definitions, past your footer, there's body right there, right in front of it. You want to have the closing div tag, and again, save the menu page as well. So what will happen when you have this new code? in chapter 3 what will happen because of that CSS style sheet your home page and your menu page will basically have this look to them when they finish and they've got these visuals in the book so you'll know what your pages should look like so do test them out make sure they work if you have questions of course you can always ask me but try as much as you can on your own without having to get the handheld stuff too much I did basically write the code for you but I wanted you to understand how the definitions in the book translate to what you're doing on your particular pages. Let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, um, again, when you finish these pages, it is absolutely vitally important that you take, and you don't have this, you want to be sure that you take these three pieces of information, and I'll make these very large for you so you can see them. You want the Java Jam page.css you want the index page and you want the menu page to all three be contained inside a folder that is called Java Jam just like I did earlier today I had something called Java Jam you can call it anything you want to and have those three pages inside of it if you put them submit them to me separately you will not have a perfect score because the web pages have to interact with each other and if they are in separate submissions then they can't interact so it's very important if you have difficulties even though I gave you some small exercises about making zip files if you have difficulties with this you need to contact me don't wait until the last minute and don't wait until you are three or four or five chapters into the course because this will get tougher for you otherwise I hope this helps you out and if you have any questions please let me know and I apologize for the length of the video, but I, I felt like I owed you this explanation.